which is mental. Death. The cows here are al almost too laid back. <laughs> this, this is it, Stuart, not putting pressure on. This is everything you've been working on. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. The important bit of this brand new cow building. Ginger guy, feeding cows. Oh, do you know what that is? That's a fight, that's a doorstop. When we're tanking slurry out, you put the pipe on it so it right. more technical that. I'm utilising it, which means I don't have to bend over so far. That sounds great, good for you back. Good morning everyone. If you have not already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, ring the little bell, you get notifications of my videos every Tuesday, Friday, and the odd occasion we do the Sunday video. And back after great demand, we have Stuart from Eterna. Stuart as you all know was a massive massive help for our brand new cow castle cow shed absolutely amazing helped me out with lots and lots of stuff and Stuart at this time has brought a team so that's what you'll see in the background a turn it as a group are looking at the shed and how it works there's a lot of pressure on Stuart's shoulders today you feel it don't you not in the slightest <laughs> that's not what he was telling me um, last night at tea before yeah. I started crying even. <laughs> <laughs> loads of stuff going on today we are going to test the building and see if it's better than our old building you just seen last Last year in April, as Stuart reminded me, that we did a load of tests, didn't we, Stuart? We did. We outside. did a wind speed test, wind direction, temperature outside, humidity outside, light outside, and then we tested what the temperature, humidity, and light was in the buildings we had to see how productive they were and see if they were actually comfortable for the cows, didn't we? Yeah, to see if there was any improvements we could make, yeah. which we kind of found some that we think we could. Well, not these, many. The sheds are a little bit tired. The actual shed that I thought was poorer did better than the new yeah. shed, but that's another conversation. What Stuart is here today to do is test the new big shed, aren't you? To make sure it works to the best yeah. of its ability. <laughs> and I'm hoping it will, obviously, yeah. for your sake as, as the farmer. It's, it's what we try to work on is to make things right. Yeah. We had the discussion after we finished our chat about whose design we were going to go for. Yeah. And you said it was going to be this one because you didn't want to use the lot. Yeah, you didn't want to lose that one. Yeah. You wanted to gain a shed. Yeah. So we had to build everything around this brownfield spot rather than yeah. the greenfield spot, yeah. which is why we're going to go through one of the details of why I've recommended we do what we do. You understand why certain what things, we did. yeah, basically. Cool. So if you don't understand as well, a brownfield site is where a shed used to be. You knock it down, you go again. A greenfield site is with a very pretty assistant <laughs> is a field over there so if you put a shed in the middle of a field it's a greenfield site which makes it super easy to do whatever you want it was not super easy to do whatever we wanted but we got it done right so first of all we're gonna find out which way the wind's blowing we're gonna do the old farmer trick it's not really grass it's kind of muck so it's coming from here Doesn't south last year was coming from the east and it was a lot colder last year yeah, yeah we're doing all this on the outside of the shed to start with aren't we uh, yes, so we can compare to the inside. Yep. There's no point looking in there until we know what's out here because we have the comparisons on the old one, but we just don't know on the in one. Look at this technical thing! Look at that! 0. 0.6 metres 0. 0.6. per second. What was it last time? 3.3 .3 gusting to 3.8. Oh, there's a lot less wind. 20%. Well, way, way, way more than that. What it means is, we talked a bit about how the stack effect works, yeah. which is how that ridge works. Anything over 5 metres per second, the ridge, uh, the Ventura effect, which is how it, what keeps aeroplanes in, in the air, goes over the top of the ridge and sucks the dirty air out. Anything less than uh, five seconds per meter, you rely on the stack effect, which is the heat of the cows, to push the air out. Yeah. So the best so time to test the building is where there's no wind, because... Which is now. Which is now. Again, the pressure is on. So we've got 0 0.6. 0 0.6, everyone. Put it in your diaries. So temperature outside. It's warm. I'm toasty. I don't even know why I've got a beanie on today. Um, I'm going to guess 10. 21. 21 degrees. And 42 humidity. That can't, it's not 21 degrees. Uh, I'd be in my shorts. Well, this one here in the sunshine uh, says 24.3. How is that right? I don't get it. I don't make it. <laughs> so it's, we are about 21 degrees. Yeah, bear in mind that that one, that machine there will take off the wind chill factor. Okay. So if you're doing wind speed in a calf shed and it's at 0 degrees and the wind blows a bit of a gust now, I think it's come up to about 1.1, 1.2 that will actually calculate what the wind chill factor is. So it's going up to just now, breeze up to two point. Depends which way you go. So I now I've changed it to 0.6 to... 0.6 to 2.6, the wind, because the wind's, it's but changing all the time. I can't believe it's 21 degrees. It's, oh, it's gone down to 19. Yeah, that's because we're standing in the shade. It comes to dinner. I don't believe that. We're going to go back to that later. Humidity? It was 44%, which 44%. is lower than it was last time. Light outside, I've got sneaking suspicions. It's very bright today. It is lovely. It's a lovely day. A light of 
540. Last year, yeah, <laughs> in that cloudy day, yeah, it was 1,080. Was it? How is that? Is that because the the sun's higher? Sorry, beg your pardon. 1804. How how does that work? I don't. Again, I don't make the rules. <laughs> I think it might have been the fact that last year was a bit cloudy, yeah. intermittent with sun. Today, if we look around, you can just see there's a bit of haze. And that obviously haze is both sides of us, so we're in a, a slight haze and that might be dampening down. Okay, so we can't see that haze. No, but the, really obviously the light it? picks it up. We've got everything that we need on the outside. Now we need to do all the same tests on the inside before we <laughs> let off those smoke bombs. <laughs> the important bit of this brand new cow building. By the way as well, we didn't feed them a lot. Today, we want them to eat up, and what we're gonna do is scrape up a clean up. We've not scraped up for about three weeks, so not just I, I, I like the fact the way you're feeding them. I see farms that feed in troughs, yeah. and I genuinely believe that you probably get less waste. Yeah, yeah. Price of fertilizer, price of silage. <laughs> it, it's, we, we need it into the yeah, cow, yeah. not into the well, slow the, the problem with the trough, we're going massively on a tangent, but the problem with the trough is the all the feed is always at the bottom, yeah. so you've got to get into the bottom. This stuff, we're pushing it to them all the time, so it's mixing the older stuff to them. It's yeah. going back to, would you want your pizza on an old pizza, or do you want it on a fresh plate? Yeah, so that was Stuart's, <laughs> it was Stuart's fault that we fed in the middle, and not on the edge, we were never going to feed on the edge anyway. Stuart was saying, and I use the analogy, that you would not want your pizza outside. to be outside. No, it's, 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 feeding, it's feeding outside rather than feeding inside. The food consumption of the cows, and I've seen it on, on yields days afterwards, and the way the cows react and on herds that have got the rumination collars on, yeah, yeah. that feeding outside when it's really, really wet has changed the uh, the day after the, the amount of rumination minutes that cat had, those cows have, and the day after that, it showed in the bulk tank reading. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do these tests. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. The temperature in here is 20, humidity 46. <laughs> Last time we had humidity of 60 and temperature 13.2, so there's a lot less moisture in, the, in this uh, building than there was in either the other two which means that there's more ventilation first thing's looking good right let's have temperature. a temperature this is, is, it gonna, is it gonna read do you reckon it'll read though it should do southerly facing grp oh, yeah go on it's 23.4 this one here is 20 and that's because the sun's, that's there. The sun's there and that's there so if you imagine twice as many roof lights on that side to that side yeah if you had that same amount of roof lights on there you'd have a lot more of 23 and a half degrees yeah, yeah. and more heat on that side so a lot more heat on this side and a lot more light on this side well we'll do the light in a second where you don't need it this building has been specifically designed to make sure that both sides are as evenly as possible yeah, you yeah. can get yeah. and that's what we want with this shed to make it as happy and healthy for these ladies as possible speed i'm not actually expecting any well but saying that we have air movement of 0.4 you point one here. Yeah, do it at a cow height level. Oh, okay, sorry. The cows aren't up there, the cows are down there. Everything you do must be done at cow height level because that's where the cows are. And that was point 0.3 as an average? Yep. My target is point 0.2. Yeah. So far, so far, so good. Mm. And the reason it's point 0.2 is basically I want clean air past that nostril of the cow in between breaths. Yep. Nice and simple light what i want i'd like to do is three uh one over that side which is the south side yeah one in the middle and then we'll walk over there and okay. do one on the north side yeah because i'm interested myself to see if there's any more or less light on the south and north should so, we have taken the wind speeds from there or does it not really matter no because the, the worst place for wind speed is right where i'm stood right where we're stood because the vents the inward vents are, are out there yeah. So it's going to be better out there, closer to where the wind comes in. So I'm looking for to test the worst place possible for performance to make sure that as long as the worst place hits the targets, the best place will be fine. 280, 290. So really pleased. It's over the 200 lux, no lights on. Sorry to interrupt you, madam. We're going to do a light meter reading from here, which is a fairly dark yeah, yeah. area. This is the worst corner in the shed, 100%. 500 and 550. And it drops. Oh, and it drops when the GoPro goes, yeah, I reckon 550 if you yeah. turn it straight, cow level. Cow level. 600. Yeah. So, so it's actually lighter here than it is over there. Which is mental. Are we going to go to the complete other corner? I think so. Back in here again, the feed passage, 700, 700 so 600 odd. Was it? But it has got a bit brighter. You know, just one of the things you, you noticed when we built the shed, roof lights above the feed passages, not above the cubicles. So yeah, look, they're over the feed so passages. The cubicles are here. 
So you don't want a hot spot on the cubicles. cubicles. Yeah. So I'm quite happy to have hot spots ish on the walking passage because they're not really there for long. They're spending a lot longer lying down and chewing yeah. the cud. Cows make grass sat down. Yes. Cows no. Cows make milk sat down. Cut and on. one thing I will say, Tom, is looking at this, there is no there is no bullying, there's no preference to where they lie. There are cows just absolutely everywhere. <laughs> spread evenly there is no like in the, the other shed we had all the heifers being one corner because nobody likes it yeah heifers would always go on the right hand side yeah there from. is none of this here at all there are cows just everywhere oh light at 200 and 240 yeah it's above the 200 so you're happy yeah but bearing in mind that there are twice as many roof lights on this side as there are that side yeah that side's still brighter than this side it, it's mental isn't it because of where the sun is that's why you should really have wherever the sun is you have lesser roof lights than you do where it's not yeah like where you'd put solar panels on that side yeah oh. we've looked at the light inside in the daylight but now we need to look at the light at night was setting the light at between 11 and 5 dimming it a good decision you're about to find out and we are here so it is the night time and we're going to check the lights in the main shed but first. We thought we'd do the other one because I wasn't here in the night time last yeah. time. And it'd be interesting to see what the lights were yeah. like in that shed. We've got some really friendly cows, as you would imagine. Take one over here, because obviously this is where the cows lie at night. It's but one. one. <laughs> Which is supposed to be looking at 200 or 150 to 200, 160 to 200 Between, at night. Yeah. But up till 11 o'clock and, and, and then five. So you've got your um, six hours. So currently, let's have a look at that again. One. Where is it over the feed area? Because that'd be quite interesting. 13, 14. It'd probably be higher if I went into there. 15, 16 looks on the feed aisle. One looks where the cows are sitting. But in winter, you've got to think at four o'clock, it's dark yeah. to what, half seven, eight o'clock? Half seven, eight o'clock. So that's quite interesting. So when a cow is sat down between four o'clock PM to eight o'clock AM, 16 hours, it is one looks yeah, you, you, to a degree. That is about the, the central passage area is give or take about what it wants to be when they're at rest. Yeah, but we want them to rest only between 11 and yeah, 6 it's like us be. right let's see the main shed cow height 200 and... so it's, it's 260 I'm really pleased with that really really pleased actually yes. that's what we that's what we wanted at the end of the day the cows are here to be comfortable they're perfectly relaxed even though it's dark outside they're very very happy they're milling around as though it's daylight yeah. and that's what we want however we do want them in a minute when we switch the lights off cows sleep for about four hours a time four hours a day that's all they sleep for but you do need light because at the end of the day they're in natural they'll be the bottom of the food chain if you can't hear anything and they can't smell anything because they're downwind they need to be able to see although these girls are lovely they don't realize that wolves and bears are actually extinct in this country which is why they'll go after a jack russell dog yeah so they need still need to be able to see at night look how comfy they are though i'm i'm well impressed i really am <laughs> Aren't you? <laughs> no disrespect, but they would not be doing this if they were not happy. Yeah. If they were not happy cows, they would not be, I mean, they don't know me, they're not a stranger. Now we go on to the app. So this is what happens at 11 o'clock. 31. Yes! Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <Come on>. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> so we um, so we got 31. We wanted it 40 and under-ish. No, 30, 30, 30 to 50. 30 to 50. 50. But on the lower end, not yeah. on the higher end. So if it came in at 50, I'd be okay. If it came in at 30, I'd be going spot on. <laughs> we got 31. 31. Having that, the excess light that we've got is over the feeding area, not over the lying area. You can just see here, what we worked out, we were trying to dim them all. And then we realized if we just kept the middle ones up over the feeding area and then dimmed it here, all the cows would go to sleep anyway. That was super interesting. The light test, we passed. Back to you, Tom, tomorrow. See you, Tom. Yeah. Light creates performance. Yeah. Health, uh, ventilation is health, then performance. Light is performance, then health. Now, Stuart has got to get dressed up for the big one. So we were going to do it in the corner there but Stuart says there's no cows here we don't want to stress them out too much no, so we do gonna... have a bit of a drone in here cows are a bit used to me being about that's probably going to help because Luke's feeding up takes yeah. a bit of the noise and I've got a drone there to see if it comes out of 
yeah. sky. So one minute, let me just apologize press. to the ladies if it frightens them a bit. Okay. This, this is it, Stuart, not putting pressure on. This is everything you've been working on. Three, two, one, go. Is that all of it? That's all of it. When it's going straight up there, we're exactly where I wanted it. Smoke is now going straight up. Uh, it's not di d d um, diverting at all outwards or sidewards. It's going straight up the ridge. Unfortunately, my phone is not typing it, so we might have to dot off the video. But already what we're seeing is, unlike the other sheds where the majority of it went over or down, it's now got to an impasse and the air is started, the smoke is starting to come back out, but it's hovering around there. It's, it's away from the cows. And that's what I wanted to see. You can still see it hitting the ridges going up, but it's slowly going out. You can see it coming out the ridges. It's not going across any other cows. That last little bit of smoke seems to be just hanging there. It's a little bit disappointing, the fact that it's, it's hovering but at least it's hovering in the middle and it's, it's moved away from where the cows are. You see it when, when it was coming out of the drone, you could see it going up and go, going that way. Yeah, it is spreading out, yeah. but it is up high. It's up high. It's not on top of the cows, is no. it? No, not at all, which is what we need. What, what do you think? Well, considering the, the weather conditions are as bad as they get, yeah. I'm really, really pleased yeah. that although we haven't cleared the, uh, the, the room in a minute and a half, which is pretty much what I'd like, the science says, that we need to clear it once every 15 minutes. Yeah. So we're well, well within that. There is a tiny bit of haze left, yeah. but it's way, way above where the cows are. And when we had the hover, it was hovering over the feed passage, but a good five or six meters yeah. out, out, out of the way of the cow. The main thing was the smoke came up yeah. and went up. And it's not lingered and, and dropped down. It's not it? lingered and it's not, there was no, if you had a cow over there that had pneumonia, which I know you don't, but it didn't spread like the others <laughs> over and around the other cubicles. Yeah. It went up, it went out. <laughs> we'll go away from these cows. But yeah, I'm, I'm pleased. You're pleased? It's done what it needed to do. Yeah. In well, the worst we just, possible weather conditions. We just wish it would go slightly in quicker. Slightly quicker. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a second smoke bomb on this corner, which technically should be the worst corner yeah. because the wind's not pushing it from that side up. And we're gonna see if we can get rid of the smoke again. Three, two, one, go. As we got the actual, uh, what little wind there is coming through the end, it's actually pushing the smoke over a little bit. Yeah. But already it's, it's going upwards. You can actually see where it's fighting with the wind, yeah. where the smoke is trying to get up there, is being pushed over here. So there's a, there's a lot to be said for actually completely blocking in the ends of the building. What we'll be doing with the data that I've got and the videos that we've got, we'll be running some simulations when we get back to the office in a few days to see how it would react if we actually blocked the whole of the end in. This well, it's actually coming, off the, coming out the side, coming out the Yorkshire border now. Is it going out? It's yeah, going yeah. out that side, which is absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. But I'd have preferred it to go upwards. But there is now this wind here. It's actually picked yeah, up yeah. a bit, and it's pushing it over, which is fine. These guys are now fine. It is actually rising, but it is whirling around more than I'd like. So, like I said, I put the data into our, our computer, and to see if I was to turn around and block this end in potentially what would happen with the smoke. Well, the wind's picked up. If I was at the wind speed now, yeah. it's not gonna be 0.6 because it's actually quite windy. But that's no excuse. It's still not as how I'd like it. But I'm still happy because it's actually still above the cow height, which is the key. It's now going out the end as well. Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> where, where Luke's just loading, you can see. So that breeze is not helping at all, is it? Because it's not hitting the open protected ridge. It's, 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 well, it's like, almost like the in-between. And it's, it's, it is always difficult when it comes to building new buildings and old buildings. So this is the reason why that is so high to the east and the pitch is so high. Yeah. These buildings around it will affect the wind on the ridge of that anywhere between five and 10 meters above that ridge. Yeah, yeah. So we needed to have a steep pitch to make sure that the ridge of this building is the highest building yeah. to catch the wind. We've also had to put it slightly higher than normal on the eaves 
because of that side above that ridge is 2.14 if we'd lowered the eaves down we could have had a less we could have had 100 mil per linear meter yeah which is less than the ridge where it needs to be four times the amount so that is why we had to put the eaves so high is to make sure that we get above that building and the ridge at a steeper pitch which is why the wearings were none too chuffed with me because <laughs> it's not easy and it was the hottest day of the year yeah. last year yeah. i had a call from chris um <laughs> that's why it's such a high shed and such a steep pitch if we were to put it on a greenfield site 17 and a half degrees probably another half a meter lower maybe even a meter lower yeah. because we wouldn't need to fight with the buildings around it yeah, yeah. and you've got objects on all four sides you had to build it here don't have an issue with that but we have to plan and make it the best it's practically all oh. gone now isn't yeah it? it was interesting it really did want to come here it wanted to go it up there fighting. it was fighting to get there and that it? to me says that perhaps when i do my simulation because we can do that at a turn it i might see what it looks like if i was to block this off yeah whether that then stops the wind blowing in and allows the air to just go up straight to the ridge well how long let's have a look or 4 15 something like yeah about four and a half minutes it's not as good as the uh lows last year no nope. but the lows had loads of holes in it <laughs> and it's twice as good as that one yeah but we know it's airy but the key was the fact that when the, when the smoke even though it was hanging around yeah, yeah. it is hanging around it was hanging around up there on the top, wasn't it? On the top. and because our sheets are uh semi-compressed and they're able to absorb 40 percent moisture more moisture than the imported ones if that had been um aerosol molecules from a cow a lot of that smoke hanging around touching the roof will actually be absorbed into the sheet which is why fiber cement is better than tin and semi-compressed is better than fully compressed at a litre worth of aerosol and how many millions of virus bacteria there or viruses and bacteria in a litre of aerosol yeah, yeah. And, and, it actually, and it actually as soon as it touches that sheet it soaks it into there yeah. and when the wind picks up or the air moves a bit it dries it out so i'm, I'm absolutely really happy with the whole the whole shed on the smoke grenade test and it lingered a little bit a little bit more than we wanted it to but on overall how are you feeling about the humidity the temperature the light and the way the smoke bomb works i'm really really pleased <laughs> and, and somewhat relieved <laughs> the smoke bomb we know that it didn't work but i wouldn't expect it's the, the one of the worst possible days for ventilation yeah, yeah. so you know we saw the howling gale that blew through that one yeah, yeah, yeah and it still took seven minutes to clear there's nowhere near the wind in this one and it still moved but what was pleasing was it took it above cow height level the interesting part was watching the smoke fighting with the wind yeah to get up really but it interesting came out the side yeah i'm really really pleased i can go home today with 200 miles and be quite relaxed about it to be honest which is great the lights were lights great were, the lights are absolutely nailed so well done to your electrician <laughs> <laughs> that smoke bomb we wanted to just get rid of a little bit it'd be nice to use a smoke bomb when it is windy on like a normal day in the yeah. middle that side performed probably a lot better than this side and i'd just like to add as well just before that the cows did very well it's like so big thank you to the cows oh they're just getting up now these cows are asleep sleeping obviously a little bit of stress with the smoke grenade off they would have never seen smoke grenade so they've done very well they've done really really how your the cows here are all, almost too laid back <laughs> so but as, as somebody that's passionate about cows i still milk every so often to have cows that you go and wake up because they're relaxed mm. is they give more milk yeah, yeah. they're just chilled in they're here, just they? chilled but you can just tell as we were discussing before yeah. they were just grabbing us and just trying to yeah. play right. with us all the time yeah the fact that there is no preferences anywhere apart from this corner when a windy day we, we, as you know yeah there's no preferences for anywhere for the cows which is no. the, the, the one of the first priorities we had to have yeah, yeah. was every single cubicle the same as everyone else yeah. humidity is brilliant because to have it less than the other buildings with cows in here heat stroke is going to be non-existent in this building yeah. which is great bang on yeah yeah absolutely so fine. we could we could house cows in wind in summer you'd yeah. have no problem the only thing i would probably do is if you house cows in the summer and you put the highs anywhere i'd put the highs on this side because it's cooler yeah than rather than that side so you've got more light which is better for them and you've got um less temperature yeah i like the cubicles yeah they're good aren't they they are good i know you've had some observations about the the bar at the front yep it's probably only the tall long cows that have the problem you say yeah well we moved this one two inches yeah. the neck rail and you can see how well they're all sat so that sat there really really well there's no tails in the muck they're actually and that's a big cow 236 is a very big cow I, we moved this one two inches compared to that one so maybe right. it's just that side i just need to move two inches the height um 
when I did my apprenticeship on a farm a long time ago, we were told 200 mil. The height mil. of the heel stone. The height of the heel stone, Which 200 mil, eight inches. But I think had that more to do with the fact that we used reclaimed council paving slabs <laughs> than it ever did to any science. So that was why it was always 200 mil, eight yeah. inches. More and more uh, farms have automatic scrapers. Yep. In my day, an automatic scraper that somebody did it without being asked. Yeah. Times have changed and the science is there and it says scraping more often gets rid of everything. So eventually when this is all paid for and the roof of that one's paid for and you'll settle down and you got used to it, then you might think about having an automatic scraper. Yeah. I love the channels. Yeah, the channels um, are great. I've seen automatic scrapers where they have a long way to scrape, and by the time they get the bottom on a frosty day, it is really struggling to move them up. Yeah, yeah. In like, yeah. say, 12 scrapes, I can do the whole shed, and yeah. three of them's going one, two, three. And we still know that things have got to change. Yeah. We know that there's a roof going on there eventually. Yeah, um, maybe not this year. No, maybe not this year. <laughs> the roof going on there, well, that will change the wind direction again. Yeah. So when that roof is done, then I can come back and let another smoke bomb yeah. off. It'd be, it'd, it'd be interesting. The reason we're not doing it this year is because the price of steel has just gone ridiculous. The guys at Waring's have been awesome, eternity. But I think financially, we've got a few more things we want to do. And the return on investment ROIs, that's probably not going to be the best, which is a real kick in the nuts because it would have been great to put one up. We just can't do it. No. Uh, I did knock that as well, if anyone did see it, but you didn't. Um, and obviously, come the summertime, I should be up again to... Um, oh, no. <laughs> we'll do the calf We're and do... young stock. Yeah. Not so much on a, the, the next potential part of your five-year plan, Yeah. but we've done the cows. We've looked after these guys. It'd be nice to see how the foundation of the farm. They're the next bloodline, aren't they? They're in here in two years' time. Yeah. So we're gonna go in there, we're gonna find fault with it. Thank you. Um, and we're gonna come up with ideas to put it, to make it better. Yeah. But I don't, I haven't seen it, I don't think there's a great deal wrong with it, to be honest. He says all this. I'd just like to say a massive thank you for Stuart for popping down again, doing these tests, doing the studies, and helping me do the shed. Because obviously we just mentioned who you are if you've not seen us through building the yeah. shed, because I have mentioned you a lot. And he's absolutely amazing. It's from Eternity. We've done loads and loads of tests. They've got some new products coming out as well, which we'll have a look at, because we're going to meet you at Lammer, aren't we? We are. Eternity Lama, will be yeah. at Lammer, so I, uh, we're going to have a look at them there. One last thing. It's been an absolute pleasure working with the Pemberton family so far. Um, uh, and I'm a little bit jealous to be honest with you <laughs> if I could have had this at home I think I'd have been uh, more inclined to um, volunteer to do the milking and mucking yeah. out rather than jump on the tractor yeah the, the main thing is the whole shed is the cows are comfy aren't they yeah. I mean look at them they are they, there's no there's no upset at all no. I love the fact that there's water troughs at the right height yeah that does this water trough we lost the top during the build right. so um, I do have a new top it's just in the office yeah. and it's swapping I do see <laughs> sometimes the people they'll have a water trough on a plinth and yeah. then they'll put the new water trough on that plinth with the stand and of course it all immediately comes too high. Yeah. Eight, 850 is where they yeah, want to so be. Yeah, so we 850. And the reason I knew it was 850 because I spoke to Stuart. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. The shed is a great success. A couple of issues, a couple of tweaks of smoke bombness, but I might let a few more off on a still day to see what it does. Hope you have a fantastic day and me and Stuart, see you soon. See ya.